decade following the Civil War, people of all creeds and colors were part of the West. The following is a story about two of those people. You two is together. Seven weeks. <laughs> it's a long time to be hunting a man. <laughs> Especially when you come up empty handed. Well, I told you we should have waited. It was moving in too fast. Yeah, you're full of good advice. <sighs> we'll pick up this trail again. It's all yours. I'm tired, Curry. I'm going to rest for a couple of weeks. Is that more of your good advice? We both got enough money to carry us for a while. So we've been on the trail too long. This ain't worth it. Yeah, uh, maybe you got a point there. You gotta try my luck. Turn Lee's flank. Like, like this. You, you understand? Oh, sure. And that's when Hawley should have hit him with his cavalry. But where was the great General Justin Hawley? He was 20 miles away trying to decide whether the war was over or not. Well, the war is over now, honey, so why don't you forget it? <laughs> he didn't attack. He was a frightened, stupid old man. That's right. Justin Hawley was a coward. Well, I'll take your word for it, honey. Where you going? I'm sorry. Oh. What did you do that for? I'll take care of him. General Hawley? You have the advantage of me, sir. Captain Earl Corey, sir. 10th Virginian. This man was making some remarks about you. He usually does when he's been drinking. Will you help me take him to my room? You know him, then? Not very well. He's my son. <laughs> Will you join me for a drink? Well, I'd be honored, sir. Do you live in Navajo Wells? No, sir, I do not. Just what do you do, Mr. Corey? I emulate the wind. <laughs> a well-armed wind, I'd say. It keeps one from forming attachments. Like the wind. General. <coughs> what is it? Please, sit down, Mr. Corey. 
<clears throat> the trip has been a little more tiring than I would have thought. You see, we're going west, my family and I. You're a long way from California. <clears throat> no, 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 not California, Arizona. We're going to settle in a valley in the Rampart Mountains. Do you know them? Yes. Do you know them well? Quite well. Why? Our guide left us in Santa Fe, and we need someone to replace him. General? Let's talk. Did you get yourself a room? I found a place to sleep. How far in advance did you pay? Why? I got us a job, taking some folks up into the Rampart Mountains. The general, family, couple of servants. Run along, Corey. Have fun. That's what I'm gonna do right here. Are you sure now? Go on, Corey. Run along and play guide. I think you're out of your head. It's only money. I hear you already met my brother. Yes. Sir, must we continue this mad odyssey? You can turn back any time. I told you before. Have you the right to place our women in continuous jeopardy? With Mr. Corey's help, I believe we're equal to any danger, real or imaginary, that await us. Shall we get started on facing those dangers? We're ready. I'd like you to ride with me. But I will, Todd. Perhaps later. Would you please help me up now? My father tells me you're from Virginia, too, Mr. Corey. That's right. He says your family owns Willow Hill. Belongs to my brother now. You know, I do believe I know kin of yours, a cousin. You're right. All right, let's move out. I don't believe we've met. My name's Earl Corey. Todd Spencer. I hope there's somebody who can take care of her. That little piece of perfume smells trouble. Mr. Corey, Avis Hawley's my fiance. I beg your pardon, I wasn't told. That's all right. 
It ain't something anyone seems to remember too easy. Too. But we came through that and we'll come through this. Mr. Corey, I thought of a name. Whose name? Oh, your cousin, sir. Oh, surely you remember Donna Jean? The girl you were going to marry. Mama. I'll hurry you up, Miss Amelia. Mr. Corey? Whoever shot this horse did a good job. I shot him. I'm a blacksmith by trade. I had a forge near Ravenswood. I took care of all the gentlemen's horses. And are you still blacksmith to them, Mr. Spencer? More of a blacksmith, sir, than you are a master of a Virginia plantation. Here. General says you're to get half now and the rest when we reach our destination. They let you handle the money? It's my money, Mr. Corey. I'm financing this expedition. Central ramparts. You see, I was stationed at Fort Apache before the war. And I found this valley completely by accident on patrol. It was cool and green, just full of the promise of life. After the war, with nothing but chaos everywhere, it was the first place I thought of. It's a good life to be had there. I don't think your son shares your enthusiasm. No. He thinks it's as foolish as this expedition. Then he came along with the others? Each for his own private reasons, good and bad. Grab your gun belts. Justin, who are these men? What do they want? There's nothing here for you. We saw a strong box. Is that worth dying for? Carl! Joe! Watch them! Oh, <laughs> 
Over, friend. We will see them again. Without horses or guns, there'll be other horses, other guns. We were only hired for one attack. That's right. For the next one. There'll be no charge. Where you headed? Poor Apache, I reckon. You pick me up there when you finish. Taking a long way around. No reason to hurry. You come along this far, why don't you just string along with us? No, thanks. Mr. Corey? Ma'am? Please come ride with me. Pay me $600, I'll give you two. Three. Concern him. You hear me? No last names, just Daniel and Esther. <laughs> the general knows who we is. Daniel, I'm getting hungry. Be ready soon, sir. Oh, forgot. The general is uh, looking to talk to you uh, at your convenience, he said. was right about Cold Harbor. If I'd brought my brigade up, Lee's flank wouldn't have been turned. Well, I don't think that would have made much difference, sir. Maybe prolonged the war for a week, ten days. We were licked long before Cold Harbor. Yeah, but we didn't know that, Corey. Those of us who did wouldn't admit it. Daniel said you wanted to see me? Reach that valley. I'm gonna build a road, clear the land, plant crops and raise cattle and horses, and I'm going to rebuild Ravenswood stone for stone. I'm gonna get back everything I lost in Virginia. All of it, just as it was. You could, too. You could get back everything you once had. Well, that's a fine dream, General. But I'm afraid it's going to take more than just dreams. It's going to take a lot of money. About a thousand times more money than you've got in your strong box. I've got the money, Corey. Two hundred thousand dollars in gold. I said I was on a routine patrol when I found that valley. 
That's not so. I was commanding escort for a gold shipment from the Prescott Mines to Fort Apache. We were attacked by Shirikawas. They wiped us out, and I wandered into that valley with several burrows carrying $200,000 in gold. I buried it well. Or on an earthquake, it's still there. Why tell me this? Because I need your help. Once we get there, I think even Reese will be all right. But I've got to keep him going. Well, isn't $200,000 incentive enough? No, no, no. They, they don't know about the gold. Not even my wife, and I don't want that to be their, their goal. I have a dream of Ravenswood, of what it represented, the life it stood for. $200,000, you could have a mansion in San Francisco, St. Louis, any place you wanted. I want that valley, and I want Ravenswood. Now, surely you understand that, why you're one of us. You came from Willow Hill. You can't escape it, or its loss. As much a part of you as the air you breathe. Now, I, I'm giving you a chance to get all that back again as my partner. father has someone like you to talk to. He likes you. I know it. He trusts you. No reason why he shouldn't. No reason at all. After all, you are one of us, aren't you? That's funny. That's just what he said. Well, it's true, isn't it? Well, that life was a whole lifetime ago. Something I don't even think about, if I can help it. You run from everything, don't you, Mr. Corey? Even a woman's touch? A woman that belongs to another man, yes. I belong to no one, sir. I belong to myself. Would your fiancé concur in that? Well, I'm not ashamed of my betrothal to Mr. Todd, and I wouldn't be ashamed if it was over, either. It's always touching to hear a woman in love talk about her dreams. I know very little of love since the war, Mr. Corey. But I can learn. I can learn love. I can also teach love under the right circumstances. And to me, you're a reminder. A very lovely reminder. on your mind better be damned important. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but as head guide, I thought you might be interested. There's a fuss brewing in Hawley's tent. You got a wild brother, ma'am. Wildness runs in the family. <laughs> to be true, sir. I don't believe you. First a coward, now a thief. How proud I am to be your son, General. You arrogant fool. After what you've admitted please, to, you please, were dared to... Madam, please. your son hired those bandits to attack us. Those assassins. Yes, to make you turn back from this insane journey. But I didn't know it was gold driving you. And are we to know where that gold is buried, sir? Get out. Get out of my sight. It'll be a pleasure, sir. Sir? You will do me the honor 
You will do me the honor, sir, to keep out of my... Given orders. Next thing you know, that will be telling Please me. Stop it. You sold yourself to him to get out of here, but you didn't sell Todd, me. Todd, don't bother about him. It hurts, doesn't it? Knowing you're a cash box instead of a man. Just don't push it, Reese. Don't push it. Where are you going? Who the hell is Earl Corey? I'm his son. He's dead. Did he say anything? If you mean about the gold, yes. You give me this map to show where it's buried. I'll uh, take that map. Did you hear what I said, sir? Little man. I'm sure Corey can handle himself without your protection. I was thinking of your blood, little man. I want that map. It was given to me. By my father. Well, Reese Hawley's in charge now, his son. And what are you, sir? Or more to the point, what do you think you are? I guess he thinks he's the one got the map. told you what his plans were for the gold. Yes, he wanted to build Raven's Wood out in that valley. Are you going to do it? I don't know. It was a good life, remember? I remember. It could be again. shine to you to give you all that. He didn't give it to me. All right, then, part of it. I'm thinking you won't take it too kindly remembering that our deal was 50-50. We're talking about half of $600, not half a plantation. You going along with the old man's plans? 
I haven't made up my mind yet. But either way, it's no concern of yours, is it? It's gotten into you, using that tone on me. You think you're back somewhere before the wall? It's still my business. We ride together, Corey. You got caught up in some foolishness that becomes my business, don't it? Are you talking about Mavis Holy? I'm talking about the whole thing. The general was old, something out of the past. This is a right now country. Ain't no room here for a man from yesterday. It's a good thing he died if I had to find that out. You wouldn't understand. You never had anything, so you never had anything to lose. I was born a slave, Corey. I never knew my mother or my father. But you think I never felt that? And freedom? I never had it till five years ago. But all the time I was growing up, I felt that loss as sure as I'd been born Earl Corey and wrapped in a white silk blanket. I guess I'll walk right into that one. Esther, will you see if Mama needs help dressing? Yes, Miss Bates. Miss Amelia? Honey, you sleeping? Did you speak to him? Yes. Well? I'm not sure. But one thing I do know, if we continue, I'll have Ravenswood. And more. Mama! Don't you touch him! Don't let him you touch him! It's up to you. I make no apologies. You have your lives to live. Do what you want. I write goodbye with love and without pain. I ask only that you bury me next to the man whose life I shared and who had joined me in giving you your lives. I can live without the dream, but not without him. She was a brave woman. She was. Is it over? Yes. Mm. I, uh, I couldn't have bear to be there, you know, not again. Oh, that's understandable. <gasps> What's going to happen to us? Well, what would you like to happen?
close. Don't let them fool you. They're easily over 100 miles away. That's five days' travel time. Well, we're gonna make it in four. You always in such a hurry, Mr. Corey? I like to save time whenever I can. Considering the prize at the end of the road, I can understand that. That gold doesn't belong to me alone. It wasn't the gold I was talking about. You better watch yourself, Todd. You're used to dealing with gentlemen, not gunfighters. As soon as we find water, we're gonna make camp. Let's ride. It's hardly the kind of welcome a girl dreams of. I'm sorry. I, I'm getting kind of jumpy, I guess. Something wrong? No. No, it's just me. Uh, I thought I heard something. I heard something, too. What? Well, you'll have to come closer. Something pounding. Struggling in life to get out. I'm going for some more firewood. That's enough, Reese. I don't want to hear any more about it. I told you that before. It's happening right now, blacksmith. It's happening right under your nose. Stop it, Reese. You're the only one can stop it. She's yours, isn't she? Your betrothed, your love, my love. Don't you think I know why we're engaged? You think I'm blind as to how she feels about me? I don't blame her. Or him. You did everything except make up the wedding bed for him. Why are you so protective of me, sir? Does the prospect of me as your brother-in-law please you now? At least you're not arrogant, Todd. My father was arrogant. Corey's his image. What do you think will happen to us when Mr. Arrogant Corey gets his hands on that gold? To hell with the gold. An admirable sentiment, Blacksmith. But if you won't fight for gold and you won't fight for your woman, what are you, Blacksmith? What kind of man are you? you and a life with you. But you didn't know me then. Oh, yeah, I knew you. I grew up with girls like you. You're just the kind of a girl that my father wanted me to marry. You see, I didn't have any sisters. No, oh, Colonel Corey, he used to love the way all those girls used to fuss with me. On your feet, Mr. Corey. Todd, you're behaving like a fool. I'd like to discuss your behavior, but I've got something I've got to do. Now get up, Corey. I don't want to shoot you where you are. Todd, you better... Shut your mouth, hear? You better listen to the lady. She's my woman, Corey. You better ask her about that. Just get on your feet. I want to do this fair. You start ordering me about. I said get back to camp. Now 
you said you wanted this done fair. Well, you could point that gun right at me, and I'd have mine out and you dead before you could get it cocked. I don't want to die, Corey. But I've got to live with myself. And I woke up to that a couple days ago. I don't know about ballroom manners and social bowing. All I know is fire's heat and God's grass and sunlight. Maybe I ain't fit to take her arm. But I love her. Maybe she's just a, a girl now. But I'd make her into a woman. Righteous indignation. I'd rather settle it this way and not have your murder on my conscience. Have you seen him? What's the matter, honey? You look boiling mad. Jamal! Oh, Jamal, Jamal, your master. My what? I'm sorry, I mean, uh, I mean your partner. Yeah? Well, he and Todd, Todd took the general's gun and he doesn't know how to shoot him. They're, they're out there in the clearing. Well, well. So the blacksmith found a spine after all. What does that mean? What have you got to do with this? Just a touch of Iago, darling. Every man in love is a brother to our fellow. And in this case, Iago didn't even have to lie. <laughs> what a surprise! We meet again, my friends. Remember us, buddy? What are you doing here? I paid you. What do you want? We want the Negro, the black gunfighter, and the jewels. Where are they? Where's the black man? The others. They le they left us. They they rode away. <laughs> the prettiest women they lie the best. Don't they, Carl? Emilio, here it is. Oh, por favor, señor, don't be foolish. <laughs> don't laugh. I'm taking you next. The way you taking him? Corey, Mr. Corey, those men, the bandits, they're here. Mm, these people drink good wine. Maybe we ought to just forget about the black boy. Take what we got and ride. No, it's a matter of honor. Without him, we have nothing. Listen. There's someone out there. Grab him, form a circle. Listen to me out there, wherever you are. We are riding out. If you try to stop us, we'll kill all three of them. Get the horses. Get the horses! Or 
anything. Just a shoulder wound. A big man like that, he'll spit it out. Here. This belongs to you now. That belongs to me. That ain't gonna do you no good, Mr. Reese. There ain't no gold. There never was. What are you talking about? That was the story the general made up just to keep you all going. You're lying. You tell him, Mr. Todd. He's right. The general was gonna pretend that after we got there, somebody else had already taken the gold. Why? He wanted them to see that place just like he remembered it. He knew the old way of life was gone. But his family kept hanging on to it. Ravenswood wasn't his dream. Not the old one. But, uh, a new one. A new tomorrow. You're lying. No, I'm not, Reese. That's the way the general wanted it. Check the horses. Split up. I'd like to talk to you. I think enough has been said already. It might have worked, you know. You mean us? Another time, another place. I'm gonna give it a try, sir. Me and Mr. Spencer here. Why, he'll be as good as new in a week. We've taken what we need. The rest of the supplies belong to you. You staying, Miss Mavis? I'm staying with Mr. Todd. I wish you luck, Mavis. Corey, I'll ride with you to Fort Apache. Drift up to Kansas, maybe. Maybe I'll learn to use a gun like you, Mr. Corey. Maybe we'll meet again. You'll know me by my long white whiskers. Good luck. I'm Mr. David. Me and Esther need a last name. You mind if we use yours? Use what you want. 